Good morning. Good morning, Cabri. How's everybody doing this morning? Well, let's get a Lord a hand clap this morning, people. Because he is wonderful. He is a mighty God this morning. I want to welcome everybody on YouTube this morning and those who are in the house. Because this is the day that the Lord has made. This is Resurrection Sunday, and I'm glad you're in the house this morning. Because somebody made plans to be here this morning. But they're not here. But you ought to get God some praise because you're here this morning. Come on now, give them some more praise now if you love them. Come on, choir. Yes, let's give them praise this morning. Glory, hallelujah. When I think about, when I think about what, what he's done for me, how he died, how he died to save a race, the like they me. hung him high, they, they stretched him wide, he hung his head, hung his head. For, me, he died. for me he died, they hung him high, hung him high. they stretched him wide, he hung his head, hung his head. for me he died, me, he when died. I think, when I think about what, what I would die, would die just to save a race. Like when I think about, I think about what, what he's done for me, I would die, would die just to save a race. Like they hung him high, they, hung him high. they stretched him wide, he hung his head. He hung his head. For me, he died, for me, he died. they hung him high, hung him high. they stretched him wide, he hung his head. For me, he died. My soul, my soul cries out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. My soul, my soul cries out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. My soul, my soul cries out. My soul. My soul Hallelujah, 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 my soul, my soul cries out. Hallelujah, 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 my soul, my soul cries out. My soul, my soul cries out. Everybody clap your hands, come on, clap your hands, my soul. Hallelujah, 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 my soul, my soul, yeah, 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 my soul, my soul, yeah, 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 hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. My soul. Yeah, 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 yeah. My soul.
are so glad that you're worshiping with us this morning. May the church say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Happy Resurrection Sunday. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning will come from Psalm 33. Psalm 33, and I'm reading from the King James Version. So rejoice in the Lord, O ye righteous, for praise is comely for the upright. Praise the Lord with harp, sing it to him with the psaltery and an instrument of ten strings. Sing unto him a new song, play skillfully with a loud voice, for the word of the Lord is right, and all his works are alone, are done in truth. He loveth righteousness and judgment. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the hosts of them by the breath of his mouth. He gathereth the waters of the sea together as an heap. He layeth up the depth in storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spoke, and it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. The Lord bringeth the counsel to the heathen to know. He maketh the devices of the people of none effect. The counsel of the Lord standeth forever, the thoughts of his heart and all generations. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, and the people whom he hath chosen for his own inheritance. The Lord looketh from heaven, he beholdeth all the sons of men. From the place of his habitation he looketh unto all the inhabitants of the earth. He fashioneth their hearts alike, he considereth all their works. There is no king saved by the multitude of an host. A mighty man is not delivered by much strength. And horse is a vain thing for safety. Neither shall he deliver any by his great strength. Behold the eye of the Lord upon them that fear him, upon them that hope in his mercy, to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. Our soul waiteth for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. For our hearts shall rejoice in him, because we have trusted in his holy name. Let thy mercy, O Lord, be upon us according as we hope in thee. May the words of the Lord be blessed. Let us go to the Lord. Most gracious Heavenly Father. Fathers, we come before you and yours this morning. Father, first of all, we thank you. Father, we thank you for just who you are. We thank you for being God. Father, we thank you that we can come directly to you for remission of sins. And Father, we ask that you forgive us of any sins that we've committed now and before and any sins that we may commit in the future. We thank you, dear Lord. It's like the pastor always said, we had 10,000 tons. We couldn't thank you enough. Father, we thank you for last night's rest, this morning early rising, not using our bed as a cooling board. We thank you, dear Lord. Father, we want to be in prayer for Alice Allison. Father, touch her with a healing hand because we know you can do all things but fail. Thank you, dear Lord. Fix her, fix her. And anyone else that's ill, Lord, we ask for why you round and about. Touch him, Lord. And Father, for those that are in bereavement, we ask if you keep them strong. Let them know that you are God and besides you there is none other. We thank you, dear Lord. And Father, as we go into this service today, we ask if you just touch our hearts and our minds. Take away any strife if there be any. Replace it with love. Because we know the greatest thing is love. And that's what we should do, Lord. Love each other. Father, we pray for our pastor. We ask if you keep him doing what you called him to do. To shepherd us, Lord. And keep us on one accord. Father, we thank you for everything that you've done. We thank you for everything that you are doing. And we thank you for everything that you are going to do. We thank you, Lord. 
these and all other blessings we ask in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, this time, I'd like to acknowledge any first-time visitors we have this morning. If we have any first-time visitors for the first time, would you please stand? All first-time visitors, please stand. Keep standing, keep standing. Keep standing, we have a song for you. The ushers are going to put something in your hand. Once you fill that out, because I want to send you a little note, and let you know we appreciate you coming out to worship with this morning. So on the behalf of myself and Cavalry family, we are glad you came to stop by and praise church with us this morning on this Resurrection Sunday. Come on, Cavalry, let's give him a hand. We got a song for you now. Let's give him a hand clap one more time. We're glad you came out to fellowship with us this morning. Now, while you're in your seats, if you're able to stand, stand, turn around, speak to somebody, give them a fence bump, an air hug, wave your hand, but don't leave your seat.
Hallelujah. Well, some of y'all just won't follow instructions, will you? Now I know for sure, I said, stay in your seat, don't leave your spot, turn around, fence bump, wave, air hug. And what did I see? People running across the church. <laughs> yes, I see first lady was the first one who got me ran to the back. Boy, I tell you. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. So we got a program. So we're going to have announcements. Sister Vivian going to come up first. Then the announcements. Then the offering. Then the praise dancers. Amen. He must have never learned. Sister Lavanya. Praise the Lord. Amen. How many of you know that when the presence of the Lord fills the room, dramatic things begin to happen? When the presence of the Lord takes over, dramatic blessings begin to happen. We see healing. We see deliverance. And we see people get set free. Well, I came to tell you this morning, if you're planning on coming to the women's retreat, you're going to feel the presence of the Lord in the room and in your heart. Amen. We are so excited. We lining up some dynamic speakers that's going to set your soul on fire. Amen. And we got some singers that's going to usher you right into heavenly glory. Amen. We are excited this morning, but I wanted to let you know some particulars. We are not having a bus to go to Lake Las Vegas that is about 30 to 40 minutes away. We are going to be driving. However, for our seniors or non-drivers or handicapped, we will take care of you. However, you need to let me know what you need because God then sent me some angels already that have already volunteered to meet you here and take you out to Lake Las Vegas. Amen. We have a dynamic menu set up for you. We gonna have some prongs, not shrimp, but some prongs, some big, some big, some big ones for you. But we need to know if you are allergic to shellfish and if you are allergic to nuts, because we gonna take care of you too, amen? Yes, so we are planning on having a Holy Ghost good time at the retreat. So you need to let us know what you need so that we can take care of you because we are ready to let the Lord do what he do. And he always shows up and shows out because when we have a Holy Ghost party, ain't no party like a Holy Ghost party. Amen. Is Omar here this morning? Oh, oh, Omar, come on down. Come around, turn around so that people can see you. I can. Is uh, Jasmine, is she here this morning? Jasmine, come on down with her newborn baby. Ooh, that's a tiny little baby. Jasmine, how old is that baby? Uh, four, weeks old. four weeks old. Boy, it's a new day in time. Because back in our time, they didn't come out today six months. <laughs> and if you wanted to see them, you came to the house and you stood on the steps. And we held it up in the screen door because <laughs> you weren't coming in. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> but Carrie, these are two newest members. Jasmine and Omar. Let's give them a hand. Let's buckle to the house, buckle to the family. Amen. Praise God. Welcome to the family. We're glad you're part of our family. Amen. You may have your seat. <laughs> Good morning, Calvary. Good morning, Calvary. Good morning. All right. 
Okay, so I know everybody's already done it, but if you have not, can you please take out your phones and make sure that it's on silent or vibrate? I know you want us to hear your ringtone, but not today, okay? All right. We would like to welcome our visitors, anyone here in person, and anyone that we have on YouTube. We thank you for choosing Calvary today, and we hope something is said that touches your heart. As a reminder, there are no food and drinks in the sanctuary except for water. We would like to wish you a happy Resurrection Day and Easter. Um, and as a reminder, there is no Sunday school today. And to all those celebrating a birthday in March, happy birthday to you. All right. Breaker Rock Beach, God's truth never changes. So the Southern Nevada Vacation Bible School Institute is going to take place Saturday, April 6th, 8.30 a.m. to noon. It's going to take place at First Baptist Church, and the address for that is 4401 West Oakey. And this is for all Vacation Bible School workers, leaders, teachers, and assistants. There is only preschool child care available, and you have to call 702-858-2066 for reservations. The reservation deadline has already passed, so I hope you called that number. All right, attention all Vacation Bible School teachers and workers. You will have a meeting Saturday, April 13th at 11 a.m. here in the multi-purpose room. Please save the date. All right, Equip Nevada, equipping church leaders to thrive in ministry. It's going to take place on my birthday, April 27th. <laughs> Y'all going to hear it until it's time. Um, Okay, it's going to be 8.45 a.m. to 3 p.m. Lunch will be provided, and it's going to take place at Shadow Hills Church. The address is 7811 Vegas Drive. The sign-up sheet is located in the church office foyer, and you must sign up no later than April 14th. The registration and fees will be completed and paid for by Calvary, so please do not register online. And for more information, please contact Pastor Ron. The Sick and Bereavement Ministry and Marriage and Family Ministry are hosting a Grief Share Recovery Group. It is taking place now every Saturday until May 11th from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. All are welcome, and for more information, you can contact Minister Charles Dunmore or Minister Alfred Washington. I heard that. All right. <laughs> okay. The Women's Enrichment Ministry, the Women's Retreat, is going to take place May 17th to May 19th. And it's going to be at the fabulous Hilton Lake Las Vegas Resort and Spa. All right. And it's going to be about kingdom women. Embrace your royalty with prayer, purpose, and power. And this is based on Mark 4:11. To you has been given the secret of the kingdom of God. The registration is only $330 per person, and this price is based on double occupancy. It includes two nights, hotel accommodations, breakfast, Saturday and Sunday, one lunch, one dinner, praise, worship, dynamic speakers, and a lot of fellowship. All right. Y'all, I hope y'all signed up. I'm going to be there. All right. Now, save the date. The theme for Vacation Bible School is Breaker Rock Beach. Do not be conformed to this age, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may discern what is the good, pleasing, and perfect will of God. Romans 12, 2. And this is going to take place June 23rd to June 27th, so make sure you're available. This year for 2024, the gospel need in North America is greater than ever. This is our opportunity to make an eternal impact. This year, our goal for any Armstrong is $3,000. So whether through prayer, encouragement, or financial giving, it is an honor and a duty as a body of believers to support and send people out with urgency to spread the gospel. Please keep your passion for missions in your heart and continue to pray to call out more laborers everywhere in North America. You can register to vote here at Calvary. You can also contact Armenia Peoples after service in the church office foyer um, on the third Sunday or upon request by email, and that's Arbenia at msn.com, or you can call 702-396-8379 for any questions you may have. 
And for our members and visitors that are with us virtually, you can zell in your tithes and offerings to CSBC at Calvary Baptist Church, southernbaptistchurch.org, or you can mail it in to Calvary Southern Baptist Church, and that's P.O. Box 363008, North Las Vegas, Nevada, 89036. And in the spirit of giving, we thank you for your generosity. And for our YouTube listeners, if you would like to become a member of Calvary Southern Baptist Church, or if you're just in need of prayer, you can contact the church office by email at csbc at calvarysouthernbaptistchurch.org, or you can leave us a message at 702-649-7230. And that is it for today's announcements. God bless as we continue to pray, rejoice, and uplift one another. Let the church say amen. amen. We have now come to the part of where we all can participate. Would the ushers come down, please? We will now have the offering. We don't want to leave none out. Let you know you all, everybody can participate. Here at Calvary, we love you. Father, we thank you for this offering today. Father, we ask you to bless each one that have to give and those that have the desire and cannot give. And Father, we know it to be used for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Happy 
Start up the gear. 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 Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord, Lord, saints. On this Resurrection Sunday, I'm reminded of John 1, verse 1 and 14. And it simply says that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Come on down to verse 14, and it says, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. We beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Please be blessed. Easter Sunday is special in the lives of believers all over the world. But this year, Easter is extra special because for the last year, we've all had to confront our worst fears. We've been stripped of the bells and the whistles and all the things we say we do in the name of Christ. And we've been forced to focus on Christ himself. I can't think of Easter without thinking of the hymns. So today, let's take it back, strip it down, and get back to the focus, which is Jesus Christ. God sent his son, they called him Jesus, he came to love, heal and forgive, he bled and died.
When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, brought spices that they might go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb, and they asked each other, who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away already. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, standing on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus, the Nazarene, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. The woman came to bless Jesus with oils after his burial, were frightened and surprised when they entered the tomb. An angel appeared to them, announcing the wonderful news that Jesus has arisen, just as he had promised. But the woman trembled and were afraid. They didn't understand, and they ran from the tomb and didn't tell anyone. But Jesus had told them that he would rise, and he kept that promise. Easter reminds us that Jesus has arisen from the dead. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple the one Jesus loved, and said, they have taken the Lord out, out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter, 
who was behind him, arrived and went into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen laying there, as well as the burial cloth that had been around Jesus' head. And the cloth was folded up by itself, separate from the linen. Jesus' followers were frightened when they saw this empty tomb. They thought someone had taken away from his body. But one disciple remembered Jesus' words at Mount Olives. Then Jesus had told them, the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, be crucified, and on the third day be, be raised again. The empty tomb pro proves God's promise to us that Jesus would rise from the dead. Easter reminds us of the empty tomb. But Mary Magdalene stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white, seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. Woman, he said, why are you crying? Who is it that you are looking for? <clears throat> Thinking he was a gardener, she said, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I will go retrieve him. Jesus said to her, Mary, she turned around towards him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni. When Mary Magdalene said, teacher, she knew the stranger was Jesus. Jesus had explained why he had came down, come down to come to earth and why he had to die so he could save the world from sin. But his followers didn't understand. Humans don't always understand how God does things. Easter reminds us that Jesus is our savior. Jesus said to Mary, do not hold on to me for I have not returned to the father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them I am returning to my father and your father to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. When Jesus said he had not yet returned to the Father, he was talking about his resurrection. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes, he will never die. Sorry. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God and the peace of God. Of the tomb that we don't... Sorry, technical difficulties. Which transcends from all understanding will guard your hearts and your mind in Christ Jesus. And thanks be to God who led us into triumphal pr procession in Christ and through us spread everywhere the knowledge of Jesus. Jesus overpowered the death and the devil by coming back to life. The Bible says when you are dead in your sins, God will bring you back to life with Christ. He took it away, nailing it to the cross. Easter reminds us that he triumphed over our sins. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I'm going. Jesus promised us that wherever he is, we will be too. But Jesus give us, gives his life for us. We will join him in heaven someday. Jesus told us, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Easter reminds us that Jesus has promised that all those who believe in him will have everlasting life.
The tomb was empty. Empty tomb, the tomb was empty. A. A. Rising. He is not here. He has risen. S is for Savior. Jesus is our Lord and Savior. T. There is victory through Christ on the cross. E for eternal life. Through Jesus we have eternal life. R for resurrection. I am the resurrection. The resurrection and the life.
morning, y'all. Morning. For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son. With love He gave His life for me.
praise him. Sing it, give him the praise. this morning. That's all we need. Come on, musician.
Well, praise the Lord. Well, folks, before we go into the word, I have two requests. I asked uh, Carolina not to put on the spot, but I wanted to hear, can you take me to the king? So I believe they're going to do that, but not at this moment. What I want to do is pray with a word first, and then they're going to sing that song, take me to the king. But I want somebody to pray with a word this morning, so I'm going to call Minister Paula Franklin. If you would come and pray with a word, after that, take me to the king, then the word. God, my God, is some glory in this house this morning. Stand up and give the King of Kings, the Lord of hosts, a round of applause. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. My God, my God, you are more than amazing to us, God. My God, the anointing of his spirit is in this house. Hallelujah. Give him a hand praise. Give him a hand praise. Give him a hand praise. My God, my God, my God, you got up this morning. You got up for everyone in this house this morning, God. Lord, you rose on the third day, my God, and we give you glory. We shall buck your name this morning because you're worthy of the honor. You are worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. God, we thank you, oh God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, for this Easter, oh God. Lord, you have touched every heart in this house. Lord, you have used these young people in this house this morning, oh God. And God, we ask that you would anoint their minds, their hearts, their souls, their being, their walk, their talk. Lord, be their Yahweh pathway, oh God. Speak in them and through them, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God, that your anointing will be glorified. God, we thank you this morning because you got up, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. Bless every house that's being represented this morning. God, we thank you, Lord, because for this generation will be blessed down to the tenth generation. God, we give you glory. Release your anointing. Release your Holy Spirit, oh God. God, we thank you, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God, that you're the first, you're the last, you're the Alpha, you're the Omega, you are everything that we need, everything that we desire, and Lord, we just want to say thank you this morning, oh God. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. Thank you, oh God, that comes in to wash and cleanse us, oh God, because you are the blood of the lamb god we give you glory god we just bow down before you because you are worthy of the honor you are worthy of the praise oh god and we shall buck you on this morning give god a hand praise again act like you in a stadium this morning and give him some glory oh my god Options are for you. 
I'm trying to pray But where are you? I'm all church out Hurt and abused I can't fake what's left to do Truth is I'm no strength to fight no tears to cry even if i try but still my soul refuses to die one touch will change my life take me to the king I don't have much to bring my heart is torn in pieces it's my offering lay me at the throne leave me there alone to gaze upon your glory and sing to you this song My heart is torn to pieces, it's my offering. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, we now already had church. It's time for the benediction. 
you done sung, danced, clapped your hands, stomped your feet, gave God the glory. What more left is it to do? Praise God. Well, if you have your word with you, go and stand to your feet, if you will. We're going to put up on the screen for the roll of Romans 8, the NIV version of Romans 8, verse 34. Romans 8, verse 34. If the sound room, you can put that up on the screen for the, so they can see it. Amen. Romans 8 and 34. Let's give them a minute. Okay, so Romans 8 and 34 in the IV version. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus who died more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. In the name of Jesus. I want to use for a subject this morning, he has risen. Romans chapter 8 is a book about salvation. It's a book about life through the Spirit, presenting suffering and future glory. It's about being more than a conqueror, because our Lord is risen. We understand we come to God this day. Resurrection Sunday. But we don't just celebrate this day. We celebrate every day. This is the day that the world has set aside. But we, blood, blood washed, born again, we celebrate him every day. Every day to us, he has risen. So we come to the scripture that says, but we are more than the conqueror. So we get to verse 31, and Paul said, what then? shall we say in response to these things, if God is for us, see, you already know, who can be against you? And that's one thing about saying, when you know that God is on your side, it doesn't matter if the world is against you, God is still for you. See, the world can't do anything with you because God is on your side. Now say, if the world, if somebody be against us, God is for you. You have to understand when, you, when God has risen, he is on the right-hand side of God interceding on your behalf. And what interceding means is simply this. When the devil brings up accusations against you, God is there interceding on your behalf. When the devil is trying to say, this is what you did last night, Jesus over there said, wait a minute, that one belongs to me. See, when the enemy, because the Bible says he is the accusers of the brothers and sisters, not brother, and sister, but the brothers and sisters talking about us. So when he goes up there and starts bringing accusations against you, Jesus is interceding on your behalf. And that's good news right there. That is some good news right there. Because, see, somebody had planned on being here this morning. But I came to tell you, through his grace and mercy, you're here this morning. And when you came to this gate this morning, Thanksgiving, and into his court with praise, God was glorified right there. When you can't give God the praise this morning. So the Bible said, Paul asked him this question, what then shall we say? He said, he who did not spare his own son, but gave him for us. How would he not also give his gracious gift to all things? He says, who would bring a charge against those who God has chosen? In other words, who gave them the authority? Who gave them a, what judge, what court, what government can give the charge over you? God said, who gave them authority? You understand? God said that I did not come into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through Jesus. The yes. so Bible says that they went down to the tomb looking for him. And what I like about it, the, the angel sat there and said, why are you looking for the living among the dead? Jesus has risen. 
And what I like about it, they said that, see, Paul gives the count. But then he said that, he said that the angel said that he has risen, and this is probably like a, just like he said he was. So I came to tell you this morning, if you're going through something this morning, if God has spoken to your spirit man, your spirit woman, and said that the cello is taking, the case is taken care of, you got to stand on God's word. Because God is not like a man that he shall lie. So if God said it's finished, it is finished. If God said that you will break through, it's going to come through, he has made a promise and it's going to come through. And that's what, before he went, he told him that I will be gone for three days. But on the third day, I will rise again. And that's just what he did on the third day. See, Satan thought he had him. On Friday night, they was down there partying. On Saturday, they were still having a good time. But the Bible said early, on Sunday morning, there was a rumbling and a rocking. And Jesus came up with all power in his hand. The problem is that Satan thought this. Satan said that he thought that Jesus said, it is finished. But what he didn't understand, Jesus wasn't finished. He was finished what he came to do. And he came to do this, give us salvation. So when he said, it is finished, what he was saying is that I have did what my father sent me to do. I have completed my task what the father sent me to do. Now this part of my life is finished, but I got some more life for you. See, I'm going down to hell now, and I'm going to deal with Satan. And when I come up, I'm going to have all power. Not only when I go down there, when I come back up, I'm going to snatch the keys out of his hand. And now death and life is in my hand. And when I come up, I'm going to the Father this morning, and I'm going to be sitting on the right hand of the Father. So when I say that you're going to be all right, trust God, it's going to be all right. The Bible, the Bible, the Bible says, he says this, he said, now, he said, who then is the one who condemned us? No one. But you have to understand, see, you got to watch out for church folk. Because we know that Satan is the accusers, but sometimes the very same people that you sit with and work, they accuse you as well. Well, I'll tell you what. If you want to look at somebody who's messed up, just look to your left real quick. Mm -hmm. Now, if you want to see somebody who did some foolish things in their life, look to your right real quick. Now, if you want to see somebody who's jacked up from the flow up, take out a mirror and look at yourself. Jesus came for you. That's who Jesus came for. See, this is a hospital of a bunch of sick people. And that's why Jesus died on the cross. When he died on the cross, he said it's finished, but I came to do the will of the Father. So you have to understand, when God is on your side, when you come to praise God this morning, God inhabits the praises of his people. And as song said that they stretched him wide. But Jesus is still alive. The tomb, the stone was rolled away. When they went in, they didn't see Jesus. And see, they saw his clothes laying there. See, the thing about that, see, when Lazarus died, the Bible said he came under his grave clothes on. When Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth, he had his grave clothes on. But when Jesus, when Jesus was raised from the dead and they looked in the tomb, his grave clothes are still there. Why? Because he wouldn't need them anymore. See, Lazarus is going to need his grave clothes again. But my Lord and your Lord, when they looked in the tomb, his grave clothes are still there because he would never need them again. He's alive this morning. He's alive this morning. And I came to tell you this morning. That the Bible said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men into me. Why? Because he has risen this morning. And I came to tell you this morning. That's why the Bible said, who can separate us from the love of God? When I look over my shoulder and I think about what God has done for me, where he has brought me from, where he has picked me up, who can separate me from the love of God? In other words, who got the nerve to condemn me? Because my God sits on the right hand. And when I get in trouble, he looks way down and says, hold on. That one belongs to me. Yes, I know he did something wrong last night, but he still belongs to me. Yes, I know he cursed somebody out, but wait a minute, he still belongs to me. 
Let me get a little closer now. Yes, that was Miles right there too, Satan. I came to tell you this morning, he has risen. He's the risen God this morning. Yes. The Bible says, he said, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall I trouble? I got some trouble in my life. But it's not going to separate me from the love of God. He says that persecution. That's not going to separate me from the love of God. People backbiting and talking about me. That's not going to separate me from the love of God. Why? Because he's in the city on my behalf. Never, you know, God is looking out for you. See, that's one thing to know. One thing is this. When you know that he's risen, he's on your side. When he said that I was going, I would leave and come back in three days, he did it. That's just good news all by itself. When you talk about the good news, that is the good news. He lived, he died, and he rose again. And now he's sitting there with the Father. See, that's a shout right there. So you miss your cue to shout. So let me say it to you again. He lived. He was buried. He got up on the third day. Now he's in heaven on the right hand of God, interceding on your behalf. That's the shouting point right there. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. And when I think about the goodness that my Lord did for me, I can't help to say, Lord, thank you, Jesus. When I think about it, what he's done for me, I can't help but shout, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. When I think about how he brought me out this morning, I can't help but say, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. When I think about how he died just for me, I can say, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. When I think about it, when I see him up on the cross, <laughs> And he said, don't worry about it. I will see you again. I can't help but shout to hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Because it's all about Jesus. He's a mighty, mighty Jesus. Here's the, he has risen. See, here's the thing about this. No other God that I know of has risen but Jesus. Joseph Smith is still dead. Elijah Muhammad is still in the grave. Buddha is still dead. But my Lord and your Lord is alive. He's alive. You ever seen that movie? Say, it's alive. Well, Jesus, he's alive. If you know he's alive, you got somebody to count on. If you know he's alive, you got somebody you can pray to. Well, let me give you Jeannie's testimony. Four months ago, she couldn't do what she did this morning. Stand up, Jeannie, so they can see you. Look at her now through the power of prayer. And because our Jesus has risen, well, she was losing weight, couldn't walk, couldn't hardly talk, but look at her now. Standing, talking, walking, running, praising God. He's alive this morning. He's alive this morning. Well, I came to tell you about him. Jesus is alive. I got another one. My brother is in the house this morning. But he left him up and he's here this morning. Well, I came to tell you, have you ever been sick? Have you ever been down and out? And you called on King Jesus. You didn't call on no dead Jesus. You called on a living Jesus. I came to tell you, this is not the church of the deep freeze. Because my God is still alive. Brother Smith is a testimony. He came this morning. Come on, give him a handshake, friend. Hold on, let me get, let me get finished. Y'all getting too happy this morning. Let, 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 let me get finished. I know y'all want to go home. So let me read verse 35 real quick. It says, who can separate us from the love of God? Shall trouble, hardship, or persecution, or famous, a neckness, or dangerous sword? For it is written, for your sake, we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep for the slaughter. But one thing about that, God still got it in his head. 
God still have it in his hand. No matter what we go through this morning, God is still there. No matter how hard you may have cried on last night, God is still here. Because the Bible says that he know every tear that you cried. Matter of fact, the book of Psalms said that every tear that you cry, God has in a bottle. So you're not crying by yourself. When you weep at night, Jesus is right there weeping with you. When you get up early in the morning, because the Bible says weeping may do it for a night. But joy cometh in the morning. You may have cried a little bit last week, but joy came up in the morning. And the reason say joy came up in the morning, because Jesus got up in the morning. And if you understand Jesus got up in the morning, that's some good news for your situation. That's a good news for your late night last night. Because when Jesus got up, so did you. You got up in the spirit. When Jesus was resurrected, you too was resurrected as well in the spirit. If you know him from the part of your sin, you too was resurrected with Jesus. And that's the good news. In the name of Jesus. Glory, hallelujah. Give us the praise this morning. He is worthy. He is worthy to be praised this morning. We serve a mighty God. There is no God I want to serve but Jesus. Because I don't know about you, but he watched over me and looked after me. He has blessed me to the point that I can't even mention it all. And it is true what the Bible says, if I had 10,000 tongues, I couldn't praise him enough. He's been that good to me. You know what he's done for you. Because I remember when I was swallowed up and drowning in sin, going down for the count. But Jesus reached out his hand and, and snatched me up just in the nick of time. Said, come on up, son. And from that day on, I've been shouting and telling everybody I know he's alive. And he still lives because he has risen. God bless you. Maybe you don't know that he has risen in your life. The counselor's on the way back. We want to give you the opportunity as we sing. Come on, sing it loud so they can hear you. So if you don't know God from the part that you're saying, I'm going to actually just come down now right now. Praise the Lord. Come on, come on. Is there another one this morning? Maybe he has arisen in your life. But Jesus is waiting with open arms. Maybe you're in a backsliding condition. You two could come down this morning. Falling in love. Yes, falling in love with Jesus. Glory, hallelujah. Is there another one this morning? Give a couple of shout outs. Reggie, good to see you, brother. Sheena, it's good to see you this morning. Now, maybe you've been looking for a church home and you've been business for a while. You can make this part of your family. We'd be glad to have you part of this family in the name of Jesus. The choice is yours. Everybody's standing all over the sink. Hold on. Praise God. Hey, Ken. How you doing, brother? You didn't think I recognize you. Thank you. 
Hallelujah. He's the end of the world. Come on, let's give God some praise this morning. Come on, give us a praise. Give my hand off. Here's another. Sanctuary, you're able to stand. Stand for the benediction. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Father, we thank you for the message. We thank you for the messenger. He is alive because he has risen. Father, we thank you for the candidates. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you. That last candidate was my nurse's husband. Thank you, Lord. Father, thank you, thank you, thank you. May the grace of the Lord Jesus and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Let us all say, Amen. 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 Thank you. All right, all right, all right. That's all right. Yeah. All the, all the children meet Miss Mitchell over here by the baptism pool. All the children. Meet Miss Mitchell by the baptismal pool. 